Hey everybody, it's InnoVision, and I've got something we've all been waiting for. It's the official SteamOS release for non-Steam Deck hardware, like the Legion Go and ROG Ally. And today, we're going to show you how to set it up on your device. Stick around, because you don't want to miss any of it. What we have here today is not SteamOS beta, it's not the preview update channel, it's not the beta client. This is SteamOS release, or SteamOS stable. This is 3.7.8, and for those of you who have been already following along with the beta, all you have to do is go into your system settings and select the stable update channel. And the operating system will be intelligent enough to download everything it needs and get you running on the stable. And you can just stay on stable for the rest of your days if that's what you want to do. For everybody else, we're going to show you how to install it as if you're installing it from scratch. A quick call out before we get started. I just want to note that by performing the installation of the official SteamOS, it's going to completely erase all the files on your solid state drive and replace the files with the SteamOS installation. So before continuing, make sure you back up any important files, make sure it's something you want to do. You might even consider swapping out your solid state drive with another one. We have a video on the channel that shows you how to upgrade your solid state drive. And so you can actually follow that as a way to replace your solid state drive. If it's something you haven't done so far. We're going to provide a link to that in the description. And I recommend you gather the following materials before you get started. You'll need a USB type C charging dock or hub. You can use the official Lenovo Legion Go uh, dock like the one we have here, or you can use a third party one like this U green one that we have right here. So now that you've got a USB hub, that can charge your Legion Go while you're doing the installation. I recommend a high quality USB flash media. And last but not least, a USB mouse and keyboard. So what I have here is my Logitech wireless mouse and keyboard setup. I recommend that, but if you have a hub that has enough ports on it, you can have both being wired mouse and keyboard if it's something that you have already laying around. In order to create our official SteamOS recovery media, we're gonna have to download the Steam Deck repair image straight from Valve. The next thing we're gonna wanna download is this tool called Belina Etcher. I'm taking this from the perspective that you're coming from Windows and wanna create your recovery media so you can boot into SteamOS. And so we'll click on this download link here and it takes you to several different versions. We're gonna take the Windows x86 x64 version, click download. And once it's done downloading, we'll click to open it and it's gonna present you with several different options. We're gonna end up using this flash from file, but before we do that, we need to go ahead and decompress the repair image. So I'm just grabbing this this Steam Deck image and I'm gonna drop it back in my downloads folder. This will take just a few seconds. While that's happening, I'll go ahead and launch Belina Etcher again. All right, now that our SteamOS recovery media has been extracted, I saved it in our downloads folder. I've already opened Belina Etcher and I'm gonna click this flash from file. We're gonna go to downloads and select the Steam Deck repair image. I'm using this MMUC device here, and it's 32 gigs, but it shows up as 31.3, and it is my D drive. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you're flashing it to the correct drive, because you don't wanna wipe the whatever other drive if you have multiple drives installed on your device. And now we're gonna hit flash, and it's gonna ask us for administrator privileges. And depending on the speed of your flash drive, I recommend using a USB 3 or better flash media and make sure that the flash media is connected to a USB 3.0 or higher port. And so given the speed of the port and the speed of the flash memory is how long it's going to take to flash it. And so we've got a few minutes here. Now it's done flashing and verifying. We can eject the disk and you can close out a Belina Etcher. Now that we've got a SteamOS recovery media, we're ready to go through the steps for configuring our Legion Go BIOS. Great, so we have all of our peripherals hooked up to our dock. Our dock is now hooked into our Legion Go and it's charging it and providing data and connection all over a single cable to everything we're gonna need. And so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is boot into the Legion Go's BIOS. You do this by holding the volume up key while pushing the power button. Once you've pressed the power button, you can let go and I just leave my finger on the volume up key. It might not be necessary, but sometimes I've not left it on there long enough and I missed that critical point. But we'll be greeted with this BIOS setup option here. 
And that's what we're gonna to wanna to go into. Before we even pick our boot medium, we're gonna to wanna to go into BIOS setup. And there's a couple of settings that we're gonna to wanna to set up. The first and most important one is we wanna disable secure boot. So you'll come over here on the left hand side, go into this security tab, click in there, and then go all the way down to secure boot enabled. Normally by default, if you're coming from Windows, this is enabled. So you'll click disabled. The other thing you want to do is go on the left hand side, go to the configuration tab, and scroll down until we see the UMA frame buffer size. We're going to pick auto here. You might have something else selected. I think the default's three gigs. We want auto. The other couple of settings that are important here, you have to go down to thermal mode. After a BIOS update, I think it's always set to balanced. We want custom here because we're going to use the simple Decky TDP plugin to manually adjust our TDP. A couple other noteworthy options here. Make sure that the thermal policy is set to the STAPM. And I like to leave my memory bandwidth at 7,500 mega transfers. And I like to use all eight cores. Once that all looks good, go over to this left-hand side here, hit exit, and then click again exit saving changes now that we've got our legion goes bios set up correctly we're ready to boot off of our steam os media in order to do that again we're going to hold the volume plus or volume up button push the power button while leaving your finger on the volume up button and then you'll be greeted with a white screen that says enter bios setup you'll select that option and then from there you'll have you'll be in the blue screen where you can then pick which drive to boot off of. Pay close attention to pick the drive that corresponds to your recovery media that we just created. Once you've put that as the topmost one in the list, go ahead and click save and exit. Now your Legion Go should start booting into SteamOS and it should start booting off of the recovery media. And this takes it a little while, but we'll start to see the Linux kernel messages right here. Yeah, so this is the output from the Linux kernel. Actually, this is still from the bootloader and now we're in the Linux kernel, boom, right? I'm going through here and I'm going to pick the option to wipe my device because I'm coming at it from the perspective for people who haven't installed it before. This is what you're going to do. But technically, if you already have it installed, you could pick this option or you can just switch over to the stable channel. And so for anybody who doesn't have SteamOS already, you want this option right here, wipe device and install SteamOS. So double click that and it's going to give us a warning say hey you know it's going to permanently destroy all the data on your solid state drive and that's okay we're going to select this option to proceed and it's going to take a little while but essentially it's wiping the hard disk or the hard drive and it's laying down a new file system and copying the files needed for the operating system it's actually cloning one of the partitions off of the recovery media onto your hard drive and then inflating it back up to its full size All right, it's done already. And so we're gonna click proceed. So it's actually, the Legion Go BIOS is actually detecting that there's a new operating system installed at this point. So this actually takes quite a long time. When I measured it, it took anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes, and so it depends not only on your internet connection, it also depends on the speed of your solid state drive. Alright, so we're in SteamOS, and now we can log into Steam. Once you sign into Steam, this part takes a little while. So we're going to want to go into our desktop 
and we're going to want to configure things like simple decky TDP. But before we do that, we're going to have to enable decky loader. So one of the first things I like to do, because the Legion Go has such a high resolution display, I like to change the desktop scaling so I can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to change this to 200%. There we go. Now we can see things. Okay, I'm going to go back out of desktop mode and back in. That way it will hold the resolution scaling here. and everything scaled nicely we can see the display and so the first thing we want to do is set our password for our deck user and so to do this we're gonna go into system and then click on this app called console all right and you're gonna type in P A S S W D that stands for password and you're gonna hit enter and we're gonna type a brand new password There we go, our password's been updated. And so I'm just gonna leave this console open. We need to go ahead and get Firefox, but it's not installed by default. So we're gonna have to download this uh, flat pack from the package manager. And so let's go here and install from Flathub. All right, and Firefox is ready to launch, so I'm just gonna launch it from here. And we wanna go and download Decky Loader. All right, so we searched for Decky Loader. We don't want the GitHub page, we want this website, or decky.xyz. And so we're gonna click this download in the top right corner. Now that it has been downloaded, let's go to our downloads folder and double click it to start the installation. And we're going to select this option execute and it's like are you sure yeah we're sure all right it's going to ask for the password we just set and since we're now on steam deck stable we want the release branch Now that that's done, let's go ahead and install Simple Decky TDP. So I'm just searching for that. And the first thing we want to pick up is Aaron Lee's repository for Simple Decky TDP. Thank you, Aaron. And so we're going to go down to the section for installation here. Here we go. Install. And so it's this curl command. So let's go ahead and copy that and I'm going to paste it in the terminal that we already had open but you can open a new console and you're going to hit enter here and it's going to ask for our password. All right, and that's done. Now I'm just going to type in the command reboot and hit enter. All right, we're back in and let's go ahead and set up our plugins before I do that I want to set up my performance overlay I like to go with three and I'm going to allow it I like to use integer scaling I leave it at linear because it has better performance I'm going to disable frame limit and then if we go down here to our plugins these are the settings I like to use for Deki TDP I set the max to 35 I enable manual CPU controls, I enable sl APU slow limit, and there should be an option here for polling, enable background polling. And so for our CPU options, for GPU, power governor, for GPU, I like to put it in range mode. And then I like to run at 15 watt TDP. 
So there you have it. SteamOS is set up. We've got TDP controls. You can set up other plugins. Another really nice plugin is the Deki Frame Gen. I like this one. So this lets you inject FSR3 Frame Gen under the NVIDIA Deep Learning Super Sampling option. This is useful for games that don't have FSR3 already, but do support NVIDIA's Deep Learning Super Sampling. So there's still just a couple things that are not working, and Valve said that this would be the case, that it's not gonna be perfect. What I've noticed is that the trackpad is now no longer working. It was working on the preview and the beta channel. And so if you're a Legion Go owner, the trackpad's not working. The other thing that I noticed is not working is the RGB lighting and configuring that. And so it feels like they're almost trying to unify how they handle inputs across the board. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. I know in other SteamOS like operating systems like Bazite and Cache OS, they treat it like a PS5 controller, which is great because the PS5 controller has the trackpad. That's all I've seen so far that isn't working. It does feel a lot more stable. For example, when I was running the preview and the beta, my device would randomly reboot. I don't see that anymore. And so it feels pretty good. I don't know about you, but I love having options. I love installing SteamOS on my devices. I also love having Windows available. I'm really looking forward to seeing the future developments of everything across the handheld gaming space. And more importantly, I'm going to continue supporting the Legion Go and other handhelds as time goes on. To say that we're excited is an understatement. We're in the middle of a handheld gaming renaissance, and I'm just stoked to be part of it all. Make sure you hit that like button on the video. Make sure you subscribe so you see all the amazing gaming tips, tricks, and mods we've got coming down the pipeline.